What's up, guys? Your boy, OG Black Man. Um, I've been getting a lot of requests, uh, a lot of questions. A lot of people are asking me, you know, they're like, hey, what's up, homeboy? How did you get busted? How'd you end up in this life? How'd you get out of the game? You know, if you were in the game so much, how'd they let you out? You guys got to understand something about OG Black. I didn't work for anybody. I worked for my family. My family was my boss. So I didn't work for, for a cartel or for anyone like that. My family was independent and we worked on our own. I didn't answer to anybody but my family. Um, you know, your boy OG Black wants to make sure you guys don't fall into this life. You know, a lot of these mafiosos are being extradited right now as we speak. Um, you know, your boy OG Black knows a little bit about the extradition and how it works. You know, and um, it's very different, man. You know, in Mexico, the mafiosos have a code of ethics. You know, but their code of ethics is a lot different than us in the U.S., you know, and a lot of people here wanted me to explain that, you know, and one thing is that, you know, when you're asked a question in Mexico, if you're given permission, you're allowed to give them the truth and, and tell them about people that are going to be busted and, and, and bosses that they wanted to be busted. And the U.S., it doesn't matter, man. You rat, you rat, your name's on paperwork, that's all that matters. Um, things are different in Mexico, but they're starting to get used to the way that the way things are here in the U.S., so politics and stuff are starting to hit Mexico really bad. This is your boy OG Black bringing you a video of me and Shadow. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to bring up some other videos. Smash, like, subscribe. And here we go, guys. You got it. He got, he got, they call me Mr. Black in the, in the house again. It's been a little bit while since we've been able to link up like this because he's got a busy schedule and, and so do I. So it's kind of hard for me to do do interviews to both of us around, you know what I'm saying, on, the, on, the, on a busy schedule. Yes, sir. Legit life and working. So yes, sir. He's, uh, it's been a, I think it's been about a month since I've, I've, I've got him on the channel. So I wanted to ask him in detail, especially right now, everyone's being extradited. Like starting with El Chapo to you know everybody, I've done videos on people getting extradited, and this person, Mr. Black, that's here in front of us, he's been extradited just like the the all these big the figures you see that being extradited right now. He actually knows the pro the, the whole process in person. So yeah. that's really it's really this is really going to be a unique interview. A lot of people don't know about this and won't, won't ever hear about it because it's actually like a big legal process and it's drawn out and. It's crazy, you know what I'm saying? So, you you were saying that they had to physically identify you and stuff before they could get like a a, a, a warrant or some or something like that. What what was that about, brother? Okay, so when when um when I was on the run, when I I, I skipped bail, so I skipped bail out of the U.S. right here, and I skipped bail, and I ended up in, and I ended up going to Tijuana, um, you know, to gather myself up and, and do everything right, but um. Uh, what people don't understand is the process of, uh, of being extradited isn't as easy as people think it is. Even if you're a U.S. citizen and you're in another country, the process of extraditing you isn't isn't as easy as, as, as people think it is. And the problem with it is that whatever country you're in, usually the, the, the kind of uh, relationship they have with the U.S. depends on how quickly they're going to extradite you and, and the process and the money-wise, too. Uh, for my case... They had to physically go down to Tijuana. The DA agents told me. Um, a lot of people don't understand is that when you talk to the federal agents or DA agents, and when I mean talk to them, I don't mean tell them, hey, you know, yeah, this is what I did. They shoot the shit with you, like, hey, how you doing? Like, uh, yeah, you're a little shit trying to find. Things yeah, like people that. in the United States don't understand that. Yep. Yeah. That's, they're just shooting the shit with them. You're not, you're not squealing or talking. You know, a lot of people plead that whole fifth thing and stay quiet. That's cool. That's just going to make your whole fucking journey even harder but whatever you know yeah it's um, better to be fucking cool with them man you know right, right off the top whatever they they know your job you know their job and it is what it is and, and it's their job to get you and it's your job to run that's the way i always saw it but um so they have to what happened with me was the dea explained to me that that um once they knew that i was in tijuana or they got a tip that i was in tijuana uh they had asked i believe the mexican government or the consulate or the embassy of mexico or the u.s government of mexico if they could put a warrant out for my arrest. Um, I have some contacts in Tijuana and stuff like that and family that are in the government. I don't think that helped at all. I think Mexico just didn't give a shit, you know, that I was there. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the United States has a lot of power over, you know, over the government. Yeah, because, because the Mexican Marine Commandante that got me told me, hey, look, I really don't give a shit 
appreciate what you do. I know your people, and we don't have a problem with you have being here. These guys over here, the suits, have a problem with you being here. And when I mean the suits, he meant the DEA. So of the DEA, the DEA told me that they got um, they had to, they had to physically go down to Tijuana and physically ID me and take some photos of me and get back to the U.S. for the whole extradition process of extraditing me from from Tijuana to the U.S. because. It's not as easy as people think, like, hey, man, you know what? We're going to arrest this guy in a foreign country and we're going to take him. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that can happen. So that was that process on that, on how they had to get me. They had to actually ask for permission to get me. And then they had to do a joint search for me with the U.S. and Mexican government to get me, get me because the Mexican government's not going to let a bunch of DEA agents or, or FBI agents run around in Mexico with guns, yep. you know? And yeah, just like when the, the Mormons came down, they had to be escorted by Mexican Marines and state police and stuff. Yep, and people say, people say they don't have guns, but I don't think that's true because I could have swore I saw a DEA agent with a sidearm. So they do, they definitely have guns, brother. If you look in like the some of the pictures where they arrested El Chapo, they slipped, and in the picture, dude was like showing off with.